ira, ça ira, ça ira. Les aristocrates, on les pendra Jaw. I was just messing oh, with yeah. you. Oh, I can't. I can usually crack my neck. I can't do it. <laughs> weird, this would be a weird uh, beginning of the episode. We're, beginning. we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're dislocating uh, our own joints. Yeah. Talking about uh, random crap. Random talking about crap. magic. Ra- talking, about, <laughs> talking about random crap. I don't know. Is that something that the viewer is interested in? Random crap and Magic mm, the yeah. Gathering? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so, but... Uh, he, you, you know, uh, oh, our, our team is just adjusting the lighting here. I, see, I look like a ghost over here. Ooh, <laughs> spooky no. ghost. Um, I was about to say, um, uh, it looks worse. Holy shit. Yes, it does. <laughs> hey, shut up. <laughs> you don't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> the one time I agree and I'm told to shut up. Okay. 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 It is true. It is like the one time you agree. Okay. Okay. I, I, I try to pander to Mike and I, I still get the boot. Don't pander to me. I'm your co-host, goddammit. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning of episode. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Oh, damn it. Anyways. um, Yeah. Well, well, welcome back <laughs> to our... <laughs> to the stupid shit. To the stupid shit. <laughs> hey, yo, but by the way, uh, thank you for uh, making our last episode make it over 500 uh, yeah, holy views. Shit. We were freaking out. Mike actually gave me um, a mini heart attack when he looked at his yeah, phone and he's like, oh. I was like, Mike, Mike, did someone we know die? <laughs> Who died? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What happened, Mike? What happened, Mike? And then just, I was like, okay. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> yeah that no we uh, got over 500 views i think because we clickbaited the shit out of, <laughs> out of the title I mean, yeah we, yeah but, uh, 
the spiders talking about it, but yeah, we we I yeah. mean our, our thumbnail was very very uh, telling, you know. The thumbnail and the uh, the title couldn't be more clickbaity. Did you know he's trying to come back? I, or I think he did. A, he made a comeback stream. Did he really? But the teaser that he had was. Um, oh, I saw that. Yeah, you saw it. It's a chess. It's a chess board board with chess <laughs> pieces and checkers. And the whole, it's just like, what is this context? Like, is it you as the adult playing with a minor using oh checker? Pe- that's, that's what a lot of people were saying. Like, yeah. it's so, it's so weird. I'm like, what, what kind of, are you doubling down on this? The dude didn't even like take a chance to like, just like let this all blow over. No, he, it, it's like he just came back and is like, yeah, yeah. I talked to her. In a pr- it, it's you just- know what? Screw it. I'm making a comeback. I'm like, dude, you've been off for less than a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you just I mean he said he was going to be off for uh, um, an extended vacation. I think he said, I can't remember exactly, but he was going somewhere else. And Jesus. Every- yeah. Epstein's Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that that, yeah, that was, was just it. You know, that, that was a small update, but it was, shit was still dumb. I was like, uh, okay. You, yeah, if yeah. there's any updated information, maybe I'll put like a headline or a title or Possibly. something. Possibly. I mean, either way, it's 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 still weird, but yeah. I mean. But it's just kind of funny. We, we put that as the thing, and a lot of people clicked it you know i looked at i don't know if you ever look at the analytics for any of our videos brian i don't you don't because it's very depressing um exactly that one specifically (laughs) a lot of people clicked for like the first like i don't know five minutes (laughs) that's funny i think we literally the in the first five minutes we're talking about like video games and stuff uh and then they're like, they, they, they baited us yeah <laughs> <laughs> no we did talk about it i mean yeah. the, if, if you if you catch it in the first five minutes you should, you should stick around for this <laughs> it's funny i wonder what we're going to do to clickbait this episode <laughs> in the fence of mr beast <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah oh my god <laughs> um there's there there you go <laughs> there you go but uh no um yeah you know before before we get on onto that old uh debauchery that's been going on with that uh Let's Let's catch up, buddy. Let's catch up. Yeah, how you been, buddy? Well, I mean, you you know what my life has been like, uh, basically, just very busy. Uh, I had that retro party last week, which is pretty sweet. That was I don't fun. think I took any pictures. I took pictures of before when I had, like, all the TVs and chairs set up and the snacks. So that was kind of cool. You know, I, I took was- those pictures beforehand, and most of the people I invited showed up. So yeah, no, it was pretty, pretty cool. dope. I had a, I had yeah. a lot of fun stopping by. Um, and to, for context, uh, when I say retro party, I, I didn't throw like a. <laughs> he didn't just <laughs> like have retro throwback. like you know <laughs> video game console party. You, you, like he took it to the next level. I tried. <laughs> um, he had a bunch of like uh, you know retro like snacks and yeah. juices. I and bought yeah like literally a bunch of like uh, fruit roll ups <laughs> and gushers and. <laughs> and like ring ring pops and nerds ropes i was thinking of my i'm like all right dunkaroos i wrote like a list of like all the most 90 all stuff the most 90 that shit, still yeah. exists like i was i'm like oh i wonder if i can get like a liter of fruitopia or something and fruitopia doesn't exist anymore <laughs> unfortunately that would have been uh, a massive throwback, but yeah, no, it was. Yeah. I was like, "Holy shit!" He, yeah. Like, yeah, he he went all out. It was it was a fun night. I had a lot so, of fun. lots of salt was thrown. You know, we were playing yeah. Smash oh, Bros. Yeah. And so like one TV had uh, melee on it. The other two were Nintendo sixty fours, and it was kind of whatever people wanted to play. You know, sometimes it was Mario Kart, sometimes it was uh, a Pokemon Stadium. But I have uh, an EverDrive on one of the Nintendo 64s so it you could choose any game basically from the N64 catalog and then in my room that we're recording in now I had a Clone Hero set up, so that was pretty fun, too. Even though, I mean, that's not retro, but, I mean, hey. Uh, no, I it, tried really it, hard. To an extent. <laughs> I mean, it, it, yeah. it was it was uh, booming for, like, about a couple of years, and then one yeah. year it was done. Yeah. Done. Like, well, so I originally tried to set up Guitar Hero 3 in here, but the thing about that, um, for some reason, it wasn't accepting my controllers. Uh, Guitar Hero 3 for the PS3, uh three specifically is very finicky about what you can and cannot use as hardware for that game and uh yeah it just didn't work out and uh 
I ended up just doing Clone Hero because I'm like, I can't do like, I have Guitar Hero Metallica, which worked, but I'm like, I can't, no one wants to play a bunch of Metallica songs Speaking over Speaking of over which, again. you know they were here uh, the past weekend? Yes, that's the, as, as uh, the timing happens right now. Metallica has just played for two days. We know. may have a clip. No, I'm joking. I didn't even no, go. No, I didn't go with that. <laughs> That'd be pretty. Here's a clip of somebody Here's else's clip. Somebody <laughs> else's clip. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. it looked pretty cool, but I was just like, I've, I've seen them already. Uh, I've seen them like eight times. Brian. I've seen them once, and I'm like, you know yeah. what? The one time is good enough for me. I, I'd, I'd probably see them again someday. No, I just no. wasn't too interested. I was like, this is a 72 seasons promotion. I don't know if I want to see them play any of those yeah. songs live. That's no, just me. Absolutely not. Absolutely. I, I look, I'm. <laughs> I'm just. I'm sorry, but yeah. I hated that it's album. So bad. It was a sleeper album. There was only yeah. one song where things were picking <laughs> up, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Here me. we go. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, you know, I, I would prefer listening to Whiskey in the Jar um, instead of. Whiskey in the Jar. I, and I hate that song too. <laughs> but I would prefer listening to that on repeat than the entire <laughs> Metallica yeah. album. Like that's how you. That's how much I hated it. But dude that's yeah. funny yeah no uh i hated that album and also just to let's put a bow on the metallica thing i saw them play at soldier field before it was my first and only time seeing a show at soldier field and i hated it man yeah it sucked me. sound does not travel well in no. a stadium a football stadium because that's just not how sound works. It's it's going outwards into nothingness, into the sky. That's why you never see a show at a stadium, and you never see a show at uh, a ballpark. You know, it's people right now. I think are seeing like what is what are the bands playing right now at Wrigley? It's like Foo Fighters or something. Yeah, Foo like Fighters, that. Guns N' Roses, and uh, I think is, it's is that real? Yeah, no, no, like that was that was okay. that was not too well. Well, let's put a poster not too right long here. Ago. I don't, I don't know, case. but I know my friend was over there for a couple of concerts. Uh, oh no, I mean like today, literally today. Oh, today, I don't, I don't yeah. fucking know. <laughs> I'll throw a poster of who's playing. But my point is, guys, they charge you guys like a hundred and fifty dollars at least. Ten know? dollar beers. Ten dollar beers. Probably twenty now, but still. And just. You're you're paying like seventy bucks to park unless you're trying to get down there on the train, which is going to be super crowded, and it's going to be just don't do it, guys. Don't you do know, it. I know just, this is easy for me to, to me. say. Save your money. Don't spend a hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars on a ticket for bullshit. Essentially, you know, it doesn't matter how good the band is going to sound, but when you watch them in a ballpark or a stadium, it just loses. The setup was it. much different this time. I will say it was in the center rather than like the side. I don't know how. Maybe it might have. Maybe that's why they changed it up. Yeah. I, I, but at the same time, I'm like, I mean, from the from what I saw in the videos, it sounded. I did see some pictures. I was of like, that. it sounded pretty cool. And, and but then again, I was, but you know. It, yeah. There's a difference between watching someone's video than to be there, but yeah, but that's pretty much oh, it. Yeah, Metallica. <laughs> I guess Metallica. technically that is what's that happening. Is what's right happening now. right now? Uh, um, but we did the retro party, which I had a lot of fun. That was my main oh. focus for a while. And another thing, Black Dahlia dropped another single. <laughs> yes, they did. At Mammoth. Ma Ma Mammoth Sand. Mammoth Sand. Um, I, I, what did I you think of it? It it's it's amazing. Yeah, it's very very fucking good. I like, really I I definitely liked it, but I liked the previous single a little bit better. I must. Say. I'm gonna so I I am the uh, so I did like um aftermath, but yeah. I like this one because it's like sure it's it's still old Black Dolly Murder, but with a twist this time. It's it it's uh, it's like it's something personally. I think it sounds like something they didn't try before. Yeah, but it's more taste. Like I don't know. To me, it's very tasteful. It's it just sounds very refreshing. Because the other yeah. one, yeah, like aftermath, it's like you know a slew of everything you love with like you know a, a few bits you know here that you yeah, know Ryan makes it his own, bits. Yeah. right? But this one, it's like it has its own identity, mm -hmm. and it kind of makes it, it 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 hypes me up for the new album, honestly. Yeah, which comes out when? Uh, September twenty seventh. Oh my God, it's so close, Brian. And we're also <laughs> close to seeing them again, uh, November tenth at yeah, uh, Concord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking of going. Uh, another concert that I'm actually going and I wasn't expecting it. Um, is uh, I'm actually going to see Lorna Shore. Uh, oh, with um, Whitechapel, Kublai Khan, and Sanguisugabar. Yep. 
Yep, yep. Yeah. So the boys, <laughs> by by a streak of luck, they were like, "Hey, there's uh, some additional tickets for some of these select dates," Uh-oh. and the radius came up. I'm like, <gasps> "And you just snatched those bad boys up?" Yeah. And as of recording this radio, they're gone. <laughs> oh, they're wow. gone. Yeah. And they also posted like um, the the whole tour. Yeah. Like almost every single date gone. Mm-hmm. Everything's Dude, gone. Yeah, I saw what was it on Sa- Sangui Sugabob's uh, page? They did the they meme did the of, logo with, yeah, with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, I'll post it right here of oh, uh, the vocalist of L- Lorna Shore. Will Ramos, I was <laughs> like, so Holy funny. Sh- it's hilarious, but I, I'm like, it, it's crazy though, because um, you know they're gonna be playing at like w- with that band, and obviously we've seen how big that band's gotten, like you know, yeah. recent years. Kublai Khan, same thing. Uh, I seen them like uh, ten years ago. Oh, dude, they're so big. Yeah, and I was like, holy shit, good for them. That's a. It's kind of like when you see like, I don't know, like it didn't really make sense to me when we went to go see Amon Amarth and Obituary was on the bill. It's like Obituary is a, a, uh, definitely an older band, but if you were to ask a regular person on the street who is obituary no one would know who that is you you have more of a chance of them knowing who amon amarth is than anybody else viking metal you know? that's why well that's what i'm saying so for obituary to get on a bill like that that's awesome you know cannibal corpse went with amon amarth one time which cannibal corpse which is weird to say the least oh that's something else we yeah. can talk about too <laughs> <It'll be later. laughs> but, yeah. but yeah so um what i'm saying is it's great that they got on a bill like that saying yeah. to go bob you know yeah so, uh, it, I'm, I'm fucking excited i was like holy yeah. shit it, it's gonna be an experience for sure yeah dude all right let's let's get into what you i mean jesus man i i all my stuff is just very mundane. It's like, a, oh, I went to a party, you know, very like mud a quinceanera. Dun, 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 yeah. <laughs> I went to a quinceanera. I had a retro party. That's that's basically what I've done. <laughs> so, yeah. What no, you I, been up to? Uh, I mean, as for me, you know, uh, I had two more shows after the tour that first I did. I came back alive, guys. Um, tour was fun you know there's a there's a lot of there's a couple of things i will have to say about it um in a segment later on yeah. but yeah i mean uh ohio was pretty fucking dope uh shout out to cyrus for giving us a place to crash there kalamazoo michigan was really cool yeah. um venue was sick i can't remember the name of the venue i'm probably just gonna put the tour dates on there or the flyer mm-hmm. um but the band drink their blood were the ones opening up they had the vocalist was also playing a uh, saxophone as well it was oh my god it was pretty <laughs> neat it was neat you know um that was a sick night milwaukee was a <laughs> yeah <laughs> a bit of a disaster i'm gonna get to that later <laughs> And then Chicago was fucking dope. We all took a yeah. group photo that I'm putting right here. I mean, you guys seen it on up on the Instagram, but yeah, yeah, no, it's an experience I definitely would like to do again. I was like, you know what, I liked it despite you know the. Did you the feel hardships. like strangling anybody <laughs> at no. the end? <laughs> no, actually, you no, know, we we were we were respecting vibed. each other's yeah. company. We were vibing, roasting each other, just talking shit oh well okay maybe i'm walking but i'm gonna get to that (laughs) yeah yeah. everyone wanted it It was like i'm gonna get to that later on but yeah yeah i mean aside from that we had a show at a vfw that didn't really happen because it got shut down it it was the owner of the of the place i'm guessing um we all kind of assumed we weren't going to be playing because it got delayed a bit and we're like oh maybe it's there's there might be a chance we may not play but if we do play we'll shorten the set um and south arsenal was saying we'll shorten their set for you guys and we're like no we're gonna shorten it and thus creates the photo of us beef and it yeah. looked like it's beef but someone got the right angle but we were actually just just discussing we told them yeah. just play you know your set we'll shorten ours it's all good that's pretty funny. but they stopped it in uh on their second to last song so we're like okay it was funny yeah um then there was Urbana, uh, Beheading the Icon played in Urbana, Illinois for the first time. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty cool. That one was really dope. Uh, pretty cool spot, like, area. I've never gone to Urbana, Illinois before, so mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit. It was it's at a, a uh, little, yeah, it's like a two-hour drive. Um, my drummer drove the way there, and then I drove the way back overnight, so I got home at, like, six in the morning. Damn but yeah, though. nocturnal. I, I can. I. I've. Uh, I've uh, discovered that I can be a nocturnal driver, which is yeah. crazy. But it's helpful. It's helpful when you're doing that because, <clears throat> you know, like 
a, the inclination is to try and sleep at night, you know, like get a hotel or sleep something. Sleep is for the week. But if you have somebody driving, man, like that's the best time to do it. You just have the entire road to yourself and you yeah, shave I mean, off so much time. True. Um, you know. It wasn't so bad. I mean, as long as you have a good co-pilot, it goes smoothly. But if yeah. you don't, that's where it... Yeah, solo. <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a bad co-pilot. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I and I know that. I'm joking. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it was it was a pretty dope uh, show. It was at a C4A Art Center. It was like a little music music uh, school. Okay. Um, by the way, shout out to Bullseye. That was our first time playing with those guys. They're actually from Chicago. Um, yeah. One of the boys in through and through Sergio Segura or Serge, he's in uh, that band as well. They're like, um, they're they're sort of they're pretty much like a thrash band. Okay. But you know they got some of them you know hardcore elements there, so you know that that type of music that makes you want to spin kick your best friend, <laughs> you know. But no, it, it, it was it room. was pretty fucking sick. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, that that was the uh, the first time I've ever listened to them. By the way, they got a um, uh, part one of their EP, Tales from the Hood, um, out on Spotify. I don't know if part two is out yet. If it is, we'll probably just throw it Do on we have here. A name for it? Tales, Tales. I think it's Tales from the Hood, part okay, one. The EP is the EP. called. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a part one is two songs or three um or two and a half i guess yeah but um yeah they're they're pretty fucking dope i'm actually excited to listen to part two but yeah i mean that was pretty much it um uh, aside from that i actually got to support uh um, yeah <laughs> fantasma negra uh, uh second time seeing them yeah uh first time was uh last year in berwin at fitzgerald's F- funny yeah, story we, uh, we went together yeah we went together and we went right after our january episode last year actually like so right after yeah. we were done with the episode we went straight to the venue yeah uh, yeah it was, it was awesome like you know uh i was telling them as you'll as you'll see later as <laughs> you'll see later <laughs> um you know, seeing them that first time, the jump in terms of their musicianship between then and now is insane. It's massive. Yeah. It's massive, for real, you know. But, uh, you know, uh, I saw, I saw, <laughs> as I was telling you before, I, I found out you were at the show <laughs> when the Shreddy Boys account was streaming. I'm like, what the it's fuck? Like, Wait a minute, I'm not streaming. <laughs> Who's over there? Yeah, so um, yeah. I was... Uh, so the last time he was that was done was when my band was playing, but I yeah. was just like, you know what? I don't want to just do that when we're playing. I want to do that if yeah. any of us are at a show. Like, if if we're together at a show, you know, one of us will grab a camera or whatever. I was like, I want to like you know just stream a couple songs from you know any local band that I see. One hundred percent. I was like, dude. yeah, because I mean, you know, just to have some videos of you know these sick bands, promote them out there. You know, I mean, Chicago has a lot of you know great local bands and. You know, it. it I, I'll be damned if no one else is, you know, <laughs> taking the time to show them up. Yeah, yeah. Dude, one hundred percent. And you did that, and I, I. That's when I was at the quinceanera. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, God, 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 God damn it, because <laughs> I really wanted to go, but unfortunately, yeah. So I was just happen, you know? things happen. But I was like, yeah, you know, uh, a buddy of mine and I, we went. I actually got, <laughs> you know, you missed it because I got interviewed um, okay. uh, talking about the album. So I and I did listen to it, you know, from like you got interviewed talking about the album. What, from who? what my <laughs> thoughts are of the album? I I, don't, I forgot the name, but I'll, I'll probably put them on there if I happen oh. to find them. But I'm so sorry. <laughs> If any, I'm probably gonna ask one of the band members if they know. But you I have no the, clue. You have no leads. I have no leads, <laughs> but I got interviewed, and and the reason why I forgot is because something goofy happened. Okay. So I was, so like I said, I was trying my best to memorize the songs by name, and I know a couple, but yeah. on the spot, I was like, um, yeah. So my favorite is uh, Nameless Hopeless, which I got right. Yeah. But the second one was funny, and like it was on the back of my mind, where it's like, yeah. Brian, you fucking idiot. <laughs> I say it, it it's their song on ice. Yeah. But I said on thin ice. <laughs> I was like <laughs> and I'm like yeah, I was so like if I at the back of my mind I'm like I'm pretty sure that's a wrong th- name. Th- th- thin thin blue line. <laughs> No, like, no, no, not thin blue line. No, I just said on thin ice. I was like, I'm I pretty know, sure the thin part isn't on the name thin isn't yeah, on yeah. there. I was like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I fucked up. I that's fucked funny. up. <laughs> But I was, you know, just telling them my thoughts of, you know, the album. I was like, yeah, they came a long way. I'm not much of a, you know, I, I don't, I don't really, I mean, I I mainly listen to metal. I, I'm a metal junkie, but I mean, in recent years, I've been listening to, you know, a lot of stuff outside of metal, yeah. been giving everything else a chance. And yeah, you know what? Um, 
Uh, the album 13, uh, it, it definitely, you know, it, it, it earned my uh, seal of approval. Two thumbs up. Four Two, thumbs up. Four <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I really, I, I figured you would like it because the musicianship at the very least is really good. And it's good that you went to support them, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because one of my buddies uh, from uh, Luzma, L, mm-hmm. they saw me there and they're like, D- D- fucking Duran, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> I was like, I was like <laughs> I'm here to support. Yeah. support? Um, I'm like, yeah. I'm just just came, just came, just coming out to support, you know, that that's pretty much it. But yeah, they're like, huh? You of all people, I'm wearing a Wolverdinia <laughs> shirt. Yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> You're wearing like some, some uh, logo you can't read on your hat. <laughs> no, I actually didn't wear a hat, but um, oh, I just okay. wore the Wolverdinia shirt. And then like one person complimented and I was like, yeah. oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, uh, one thing I will say about that show, even though I didn't go, I was looking at their uh, little updates that they put on their story. And one thing that they were selling that I really, really liked, and I think it's fucking genius marketing, was the little coffins. You remember? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like they have, like, I think a series of, like, five or four different styles of coffins. But it's like, it's almost like... a like a jewelry box almost you know it's like i don't know if it's acrylic or glass um i've already told them put two of them aside for me because i'm going to use them as uh, dice holders <laughs> fair enough yeah but i saw them and i'm like god that is genius you know fantasma negra and then putting like the little logo on there it's like you know you know like when a band has such a really good idea and you're like my god (laughs) it's genius yeah it's like the first whoever the first band was to do like a fanny pack or whoever the first band was to do like a like a grinder or something like you know they just (laughs) just, or the meme shirts that's also another you know that that's an attention grabber too yeah I was just saying, like, that to me was so, like, genius marketing and t- on their part, you know. But, uh, yeah, go listen to that album. Um, we'll tell you, you more about it later. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I command you. I command you. Look yeah, into I mean, my eyes. <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, you know, that was, a, that was a very fun night. Um, but now it's time for us to, you know, keep the ball rolling. And um, so much has rolling. happened. Um, yeah on the internet so it's, it's time to get on uh sbnn sbnn <laughs> yeah All right, here we are from that very long intro. <laughs> I I will not cut it down because I like the graphic. <laughs> I <laughs> agree. <laughs> There's a lot, guys. A you know, lot, we, but- we record these things. Uh, usually we record them towards the beginning of the month, and then a month happens, and we're like, holy shit, there's so much news that that has happened. And, <laughs> well, obviously, we want to we want to top it off with some monumental news within the metal community. Yeah. History has been made <laughs> before our eyes. Yeah. And, as, uh, you know, as of, uh, well, it's already, as of recording this video, the Olympics have ended, but they started off in the most unexpected way yep we had gojira of all bands out playing the yeah. ceremony as uh, as you saw from the beginning of this episode with the riff challenge um they played basically a french revolution like protest song essentially their rendition of it of the of yeah. the historical events that took place and it's it's insane like I, we've all seen the video i'm not gonna play it because of copyright like <laughs> they've been pulling a lot of these videos shit uh, mike sh- shit the rape challenge might have gotten pulled and we just don't know no it. no i i was smart about that trust me <laughs> okay but anyway yeah, you know but, it, it was it was just monumental like holy yeah. shit now, however um <laughs> afterwards we we've seen 
a slew of, of stupidity being exposed oh, on the internet. Of course. You know, but yeah, like it was it was wonderful because, you know, you don't yeah. really see a metal band opening up or well, doing, you know. They some- did like a very long, it was like a long opening sequence, you know, and then when it get, got to finally the French Revolution part of Paris's like, they did like a little historical kind of opening and they were smack dab in the middle and they were playing on the side of the prison where Maria Antoinette got yeah. beheaded. Yeah, which it, which is so metal. It's so metal, <laughs> and that's also why you saw the lady, you know, holding her head. You yeah. idiots! It's not satanic, yeah. dumbasses. My God! But just the just the re- their rendition of that song, plus the the choir and the pyrotechnics, and then it, the, it was perfect. It was beautiful. It was yeah, like yeah. down to the minute detail. <laughs> And yeah, it was perfect. Yeah, no, it it was, you know, and yeah. uh, but people were being very stupid about it. They were uh, Andrew Tate was calling it satanic. I was like that 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 nematode of a man is uh, whatever. Is go talking, back to prison. Go dude. back to prison. Uh, but you know, uh, there was people complaining about that. They were complaining about the um. They were I think it was an image. Uh, it was Greek mythology that they were referencing. But they were saying oh, that, that was a different part of the. Yeah, opening. that was a different part of the opening. They were like saying, oh. um they mocked the Last Supper. Yeah. I'm like, uh, that. I'm, this is Greek mythology, you idiots. This is before yeah. <laughs> plus <laughs> modern religion. Paris uh, takes. I'll just say France in general. France takes pride in removing a uh, state and religion. You mm-hmm. know, and that's why the fact that it was like, oh, they're making fun. Of, like, no, th- this is. It's not related at all. No. And then uh, with with just the the song playing in general. Uh, a lot of these different countries were commentating on it. Yeah. And, of course, leave it to America. The American commentators were just like, well, what is this? Like, what what's going on? Idiots. This is crazy. Idiots. <laughs> I'm going to just say it, idiots. Yeah. And, uh, like, you know, none, I mean, well, almost none of the stuff that went down on the, in the Olympics was controversial. There's only two, only two that were, but... You know, the, oh. <laughs> so the, the break dancing, yeah. but there was another one. They yeah. actually had a, a convicted um, yeah. child lover uh-huh. in that, it, you know, on there. But the, there was a wonderful thing that a wonderful payoff to that. He got booed off stage. I was like, good. But those were the only two. I'm pretty yeah. sure people were, th- were thinking I was going to talk about the female boxer. <laughs> But no, because <laughs> I did my because, OK, here's the thing. I wasn't paying attention as to, uh, you know. Um, I wasn't paying attention to the Olympics as much after the whole Gojira. You know, I was like, oh, that's dope. But I wasn't putting much attention into it. But then um, that same week, I think it was like, what, Friday? Yeah. Um, I just started seeing headlines of um, that. I, there was like this whole thing saying that, oh, uh, a trans um, boxer um, hit a woman. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck is this? And there was a bunch of memes being spread around. So I'm yeah. like, OK, what's going on? And it turns out. <laughs> yeah. When the reason I'm laughing is because <laughs> it was it was never it was. how ridiculous it was. Number one, that boxer is 100% female. She just has a um, she was born with a disorder that pr- has her body produce more testosterone than estrogen. Mm-hmm. But she's Which, a hun- shocker would make her very good at boxing. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. and there's people were pulling up her history. She's lost like multiple times before. Um, oh, this really? big event. She took the gold, by the way. Yeah. But she has lost in the past. Other people have beaten her. So she and was just salty. She was salty yeah, like the, the the opponent was just salty. she she only took two hits and she's like yeah. I quit I quit I yeah. quit and I'm like that's I was like. Yeah, what were, were, were you? You got in a boxing ma- match and expected not to get hit or something? Yeah, I don't know. It it was just and like the fact that you know this was becoming a headline. Oh, it's like it's just so stupid. Like just do your research and move the fuck on. Yeah. None of this was con- like none of that was controversial. <laughs> it was just yeah. But no, it, it like I said, leave it to America where it's like, oh, this is the, the wokeness has taken over. It's like, shut the fuck up. This is the first time ever also that in the Olympics we're seeing memes come out like crazy. Yeah, it was not I mean, only the Gojira thing. It was not only the, the you know, the lady boxer thing. It was the uh the, the Russian. Gu- yeah the the <laughs> russian dude one. with uh w- what event was that technically it was like a pistol yeah whatever everyone else was using like these yeah. modifications he's just like 
Yeah. Oh my god. I think he he also won too, right? He was second place. Oh, what the, oh okay. Well, <laughs> We're not using any gear. Not or anything. using any special and gear. He's dude, like, he he should have won first. In my he opinion. like joined that year too. <laughs> like like his story it's is funny. pretty crazy. He, and then yeah, the, I mean it. It's just insane. I'm like, wow, that that dude. Everyone else was using special gear. You yeah. you just had a guy using one yeah. arm. That's it. And dude. There has been so many memes, uh, not just the obvious ones, but like people have like redone that in anime form yeah, I've and seen stuff. It. I, yeah, it's 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 Manga. hilarious. But then there was a breakdancing part, and I'm like, what? I I just saw that recently, and I'm like, I yeah. <laughs> they were, they were from Australia, and I'm like, this is what you call. Bre-. This reminds me of the. There was a kid. There was once a kid in my um, high school that tried breakdancing with an acoustic guitar and yeah. drumsticks, and everyone's like, dude, you're gonna break your neck. <laughs> I see them try something, and I'm like, dude, I'm more scared of the guitar than yeah. I'm scared of you hurting yourself. Dude, but it almost funny. looked identical. Just imagine well, a guitar. <laughs> the main meme that's been coming out of that breakdancing chick from Australia was the. Uh, the fact that it, she looks comparable to this exact scene on Bob's Burgers. I don't I know, know which you're, one you're talking yeah, about. <laughs> where this this white lady is trying to show an entire class of people how to like dance hip hop. And it is, holy shit, it is like almost dead on. And, you know, oh, I don't have the details of this specifically because this is very new, guys. Um, apparently ridiculous. she kind of tricked her way into getting into the Olympics. She, <laughs> she's not even a break dancer or anything. Just the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how does this happen? <laughs> it's insane. It's insane to be honest. Uh, I'm like, no fucking way. I am so excited to see what else happens. Like this is, this is like been it so far. Oh, Snoop Dogg. Dude, um, all the Snoop Dogg memes, the fact that, like, everybody seems to be adopting Snoop Dogg as, like, this, like, basically he's like the new Betty White, in a way, where everyone just accepts him as, like, our grandpa now. <laughs> I accept him as the Messiah Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a Saint Snoop. <laughs> Saint Snoop. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But... Yeah, no, I mean that that was I mean that was pretty much it with the Olympics, but it, it's just it's crazy, like you know how stupid <laughs> we can't we turned out to be. It's like everyone else in the world's commentating that, and it's like yeah. America. Yeah, it's it's it's, like, it's been a bag. It's man. been a bag bag of emotions <laughs> for real. Like it's it's just nuts, and you know I mean it goes forward into the next topic. Well, technically this happened before, but yeah, well. This we're talking about, you know, the whole tenacious D thing, you know. Oh yeah. I figured I mean, yeah, sure it's 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 late, but at the same time, you know, there's an update. They are coming back. Oh yeah. But for those who don't really know <laughs> what happened who, for those of you who have been under a goddamn rock, uh the precedent was shot at. You you wanna know something? <laughs> I was on tour I was in Milwaukee that yeah. day and I'm like <laughs> and our vocalist, uh VP, he's like, Yo, Trump got shot and I'm like, I'm like <laughs> No way, you're lying. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, it's a lie. And then I saw the video, and I'm like, holy, holy crap, shit. he's not lying. He's not lying. I was like, dude, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, huh. Part of me was like, it, it kind of took a while. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, I thought this would have happened a long see, time ago. In but, the past, you know. there has been attempts that were made. Like right. people were trying. No, like people were close to you know, um, uh, opening. Yeah. Fire, but they were always stopped by by the secret service. No, this time, just get him. He actually, he actually. Well, there is an angle where he almost got like if he were yeah, standing yeah. here, just it would like slightly. Hit him. But he moved and it gra- and it grazed his, his ear. ear. Yeah. Well, it, well, it was it was a yeah. straight hit, but that happened. Right. Yeah. And then there was like I don't know maybe a two day period when you know. Well, no, it happened that same D. day. Um, I think it it was that Are same day sure? that it happened. Oh, well, they were okay. well, like okay, like you know, the news exploded obviously, yeah. and then, you know, before I get into this, what is the biggest way you know thing like the most like big events um are like known by like what's the what's the main thing that everyone finds out about things happening in the world? Uh, usually the just like Twitter or like Facebook. <laughs> memes oh well yeah yeah well, that's just the, the form, thing, of, those the form of those two things yeah. it's like yeah well memes well they yeah. of course <laughs> and so what happened was um it was uh kyle gas's birthday so they wished yeah. him you know happy birthday this was at a show in australia 
Yeah. <laughs> Which, you so know, convenient. So he told, you know, Jack Black is like, make a wish. Yeah. Don't miss Trump next time. And yeah. I chuckled. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk about. So, like, first of all, something so small, like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know. It's such a throwaway joke, you know. And I don't know if if this was 10 years ago. Do you think anyone would have gave, like, a shit about that comment, you know? No, because, okay, look, here's here's the thing. Um, everyone's like, well, I mean, you know, maybe you could say the argument that it's too soon, but like I said, people are already memeing on it since day yeah. one. It was, it blew up. You had Everybody several memes. Everyone memed on it. had the stupid little things on their ear, like at the RNC. That was, the, that was, <laughs> that, that was some, I was like, that, yeah. this is cult mentality. But there was memes about it, like, immediately, yeah. like, they made a Boys in the Hood edit of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Yeah. But it was memed on immediately you know like that's there was a, a jojo was, adaptation there was a jojo <laughs> adaptation of it <laughs> memes exploded and and the fact that you know it, like everyone was like like well mainly like you know the the far right were so yeah. quick to cancel tenacious d exactly. it's crazy it, and it's ironic the people who are quick to you know be like oh you can't joke about stuff anymore yeah oh cancel culture it's, it's like oh but it, like it's like, like flies on shit dude. yeah but, but then all of a sudden it's like oh and when, when it happens to you it, it's yeah. just like you, but you, so you know suddenly suddenly you're the snowflake this then but here's the yeah. thing that i'm and i'm just gonna say it he did nothing wrong saying that joke it's just a joke it's just man. a joke it was he did a nothing wrong joke, you know but and whatever like, he didn't they didn't deserve the flack the tour should no. have gone on yeah you know and and because because here's the thing there's a bunch of musicians who have done much worse, worse. <laughs> and are still you know, the, and and no no one says a, no one bats an eye. I mean, Dude. there's Varg V. Gurdness. You know, he's a he's a convicted murderer, yeah. a Nazi, <laughs> who's who still wrote music. Yeah. But, but that's His just best the thing. album was written while in prison. <laughs> you know, like, that's just the thing. You you also have. Uh, I mean, there's. Um, you can also say there's Tim Lambesis. Oh, got it. That guy can never don't be even, on the you internet. You don't even have to. That look guy at can that, never man. be on the internet without getting memed on as well. He, he wished his wife happy yeah. birthday, and, and someone oh said, "I saw the comment." I was like, "Hope hope your day was a hit, man." <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny, but dude, you don't and, even you have know, to go that far. Or, or Ronnie Radke like, yeah. as well. Like, he's yeah. also someone who says the most outrageous shit. Well, and, dude, y- like you know. Uh, fucking Aerosmith is on their farewell tour, and if you, if, dude, d- uh, guys, guys, do about 10 minutes of research of what Steven Tyler has done in the past, and you will not, like, like, worse than, I don't know, like, on a Michael Jackson type of level of horrible, and that's what I'm saying, like, you know, you don't have to look that far, but... You know, Kyle Gass throws a, a shitty little joke. And and all of a sudden, it's the worst thing in the world. And well, I mean, the Metal Meltdown said it best, too. It's it's hypocritical as shit. Well, and yeah. there's a bunch of bands who have, you know, shirt like Municipal Waste has the, has the Trump shirt. Oh, yeah. The Walls of Death shirt. There's Guar who has, you know, made skits on stage, taking yeah. down political figures, including Donald Trump. Well, let's take that out of it for a second. Like, the thing that no. also angers me the most about it is... If Tenacious D would have said nothing or just kept going, you know, addressed it but just kept going, this would be it. That would be it. Yeah, that would but be it. Jack Black just crumbled. He immediately, not even a day passes where it, yeah. he basically, he's like, this is essentially what he said. I need to protect myself and my investments <laughs> because and I in about two weeks, the Borderlands trailer for my new movie is going to come out and I need people to be on my side and when that movie uh, comes out. Yeah, well, you want a newsflash? You want to know what the reviews for that was? <laughs> You want to know? <laughs> it, it 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 stunk. It it was Bad. at zero, re- and it only made like what, like eight million dollars at the box office. It, yeah. it flopped. It uh, yeah, flopped. And and it's not really what well, I mean. 
it's not really because of what Jack Black did to you know, with no the, nobody is it, even it talking just, about it was that just anymore. fucking bad. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah, no one's even talking about but us, but it was just a fucking bad movie. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, well, well, that was like bad call on uh, bad move, buddy. But well, everyone was criticizing the casting choices, saying everyone is way too fucking old to be the characters that they're trying to p- portray, essentially, or yeah. they just don't fit the characters correctly, and then just. Uh, it's just a huge CGI mess, you know. From yeah, I mean, wh- from what I've heard, I haven't seen it either. Movie sucks, from what I heard. But you know, back to the, the whole tenacious D. Like I, I personally think none of that should have happened. I mean, no, no, like none of it. I mean, they they could have still rolled with it. Like he could have been like, yeah, that was a bad joke, but that's or or just say nothing at all. Yeah, just say nothing at all. Just move move on. on. That's it, because it you know like that he did nothing wrong. It was just a dumb joke. That's it. And and if you think it's it, it wasn't just a dumb joke, then you're dumb. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, what has happened from be, just you know like the '90s and now, where everyone has such incredibly thin skin? You know, I I don't know. Maybe it's just kind of like just kind of like look look. Here's the thing: comedy is subjective. There's gonna be stuff that I don't like that you're gonna laugh at, and stuff that I'm gonna laugh at that you don't like, right? But uh, right. but the thing is. The, the way like the way they were so quick to try canceling Kyle, it's like, yeah, it's, over this. And it's then like, look, look at so going back to what I said, look at it now. Nobody is talking about it. You yeah, know, there I was mean, a it, statement like a couple like maybe a week ago or maybe four days ago. Jack Black basically said on a podcast that we're still tenacious D. We're just taking a break. And Despite me backstabbing my yeah, best friend. Exactly. So now Kyle is probably in his house doing a lot of nothing because, he, you he, know. And, for, and, and uh, it, it sucks that he got dropped by his talent agency, which I, I disagree with that choice. I don't think it should He'll find happen, another but, one. Yeah, you know, either way. But it, it, it's just part of the business, I assume. Yeah, but I don't know. Like, they could have they could have still rolled with it. It's very needless. Yeah. You know, it, it didn't have to happen, and it did. And what can you do, you know? But that was the tenacious D thing. What was the next thing? <laughs> There's a lot, man. There's the cannibal corpse thing recently. Oh, yeah. I mean, we can go into that as well. That lightly. So, <laughs> re- as of this week, there was a, there's been a, okay, so this all started with uh, the band MSI. Um, okay. It's a punk band. There was a song called Party Shot. Right. Um, and well, okay. I will, so they were talking about the lyrics and well, yeah, the lyrics are disgusting and yeah, right. But then someone decided to say, well, oh yeah, we'll wait till you um, uh, look at these lyrics and it's a uh, song, uh, Necro Pedophile by Cannibal Corpse from yeah, the yeah, Tomb yeah. of the Mutilated album. Being a joke, being like, <laughs> right. you think this is bad? Look, I mean... Jesus and Christ! Okay, and, and here's the thing: <laughs> looking at it from an day? outsider, looking from an outsider, it's like, yeah, you know, the lyrics aren't, you know, pretty. But I mean, okay, look, it's '90s death metal. Well, not and, only that. Like, dude, here's but... the thing: it's '90s death metal, right? Death metal was like it at its infancy. You know, yeah. You had Cannibal Corpse writing. I mean, they were just writing lyrics like that about that. They they had like several topics. I mean, you had. Albums like The Bleeding, Eden right. Back to Life, Tomb of the Mutilated, but that's, Butchered at that's Birth, the whole right? Point. That's their whole thing. Is that was the whole thing. It's just writing more morbidity for morbidity, the sake of writing gore, morbidity. Yeah, and, it's and, it's almost like a challenge to make the this song more morbid than the last, and obviously. It's just them trying to write like, oh, this we we haven't done this one yet, you know. Like at yeah, this and, point, and, like, and here's the thing: I will meme, say, you know, they don't. You don't really see bands doing that as well. Maybe not with necropedophile, you know, stuff. Well, no, you do. You don't. You don't you see do, it too because often. Amon Amarth is well, all Amon about Amarth. fucking Viking stuff, so it's like every band has their thing essentially. No, you know? but what I'm saying is, uh, the the well, the the whole con the whole concept of like, um, because what's it called the this all started with Party Shot because Party Shot right. does have lyrics where they sexualize a minor, which personally I think that's far worse than anything Cannibal oh, yeah. Corpse has written. Going back to Aerosmith. Going back to you know, <laughs> and th- there's yeah. you know like yeah there's that's, tons that's of those. far worse. And there's a bunch of songs that do yeah. that. There, there's a lot more. Ted, N- Ted Nugent has a, has a couple oh. as well, <laughs> right? Yeah, look into his history. Look into guys. his history as well. <laughs> I mean, but okay, right. But the thing is. 
This is death metal. I mean, you had Cannibal Corpse just writing about gore and a bunch of, you know, crazy, yeah. you know, obscene shit. Deicide writing satanic lyrics. Yeah, m- yeah mostly religion. Mostly, <laughs> mostly religion, you know. And But the thing is, I think Morbid Angels guitarist explained it best, you know, death metal is like has is a genre that's meant to be boundaryless you know you can be right. as like sick as you want heavy slow yeah. and a good example of a death metal band that didn't write anything about that was death death wrote i mean you know they, they wrote about like existentialism, existentialism <laughs> religion yeah um, um like mental health or you know place. mental illness yeah. um a bunch of stuff you know there, there's like there's several topics that you know death like it's Death metal has gone places, you know, like in different areas before, and it still continues to do so today. But the the whole thing with can- trying to cancel Cannibal Corpse over, you know, stuff that they've written in the past, and and here's the thing: they were heavily censored by the yeah. media. There yeah. was already outrage about <laughs> they've this. They've tried. They've tried. There was there was already <laughs> yeah. outrage about that decades ago and you're getting mad at this now that's just the thing it's like a little late are you because this has been heavily talked about in the media like back then maybe you didn't see it because you weren't born yet or you were just you know you you were sucking on your mom's teeth when you came out the nintendo uh wii u wasn't even out yet when you were a baby (laughs) yeah you know but like the thing is that this is this has been scrutinized back then yeah it's it's already received the you know the level of scrutiny it's gotten it it was heavily censored you know they well it's still you know um, managed to pull through, but in some countries, their albums were banned. I mean, well, you so even like, had Cradle of Filth albums that were banned. Yeah, well, that's a whole other thing. That's certain governments of certain countries being in the Stone Age. Almost. Yeah, and I mean, like, well, a good example is Behemoth. They, oh, yeah. they're still. I mean, Nurgle has to go against you know the Polish government because they're always trying to you know charge him for blasphemy. Well, yeah. I mean, throughout history, I mean, Black Sabbath was banned from certain countries from being able to play there. But, you know, time passes and, you know, those arguments of of music, you know, making people unstable or causing people to do crazy things was they found out, just like with video games, it's an incredibly weak argument. Yeah, it and is. And history happens and we all get wiser you know, or we're supposed to. Or stupider. And now the idea of canceling Cannibal Corpse, that's why it's its not even like, it's I mean, not even like we're not worried about it. It's more funny than it's anything. It's funny than anything. I mean, it's it, never it, it gonna happened happen. to Metallica. <laughs> when, when it yeah. happened to Metallica 2022 with that one TikToker. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was funny. And Good then, luck. <laughs> and then the, the, it's Cannibal Corpse. And I'm like, and yeah. I'm over here like, you, you know, it's like, ha- have they not looked into, you know, their recent yeah. vocalist, uh, cr- <laughs> you know, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, jo- George Corpse yeah. Grinder is like, it, he's a teddy bear. He's, he's the, the most wholesome yeah. dude. This dude will, will play so claw cool. machines and donates them to children. Like yeah. there's lit- like that guy has done so much good. He's a nerd, man. He's a nerd. He's, he's a, nerd. a nerd. He's a wholesome he's nerd. Got a, he's got a Gears of War tattoo on his on his arm. <laughs> yeah, literally. And I was like, th- this dude is like the most wholesome yeah. person. And it's like, it, it's just, it's like a little late. Are you? It, it's funny. Not only that, but the idea of cancel- I thought it was I, I thought it was a meme. I was like, yeah. there's no way this is happening. I'm like, and then I'm like, oh okay. <laughs> but yeah. like you know, I will say, I mean, I do agree with the whole. Well, I mean, the MSI song is 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 revolting. Of course, I've I've read the lyrics. I'm like, yeah, this is disgusting. Of course, right. but but at the same time, it's like, okay, look, the, going on, can, trying to like, you know, can, cancel Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, good luck with that. I mean, that's that's like, that's decades back already. Yeah. And I mean, there's all the, the, the everything's well, also trying to cancel something that such a like. Let's be honest. Out of all of the music groups, metal is probably the least popular out of all of them and when you try to so not only that so here's the big category that is metal then you go all the way down to death metal which again is a sub sect of that already small unpopular group trying to cancel something where all of the fans do not give a shit good luck i mean jesus christ yeah you're you're not going anywhere with that yeah you know i mean that's just the thing i'm like Wow, I mean, it's only going to draw new people to the music as well. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, well, I mean, yeah, that that's just the thing. Like, you know, several bands have written, you know, like, morbid lyrics about, like, certain, yeah. like a lot of topics. I mean, I guess another example you can add on there is Death Mass Divine by the Black Dolly Murder. That body, I mean, that's, I mean, that song is literally about having sex with a dead body. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's... 
it's like I mean, it, at the end of the day, it's like mythical. It's like we none of this shit is it's, real. None of it is, you know. Real. The, sure, it happens, and unfortunately, right? right of course, but these guys aren't writing it to like they're they're just they're talking about it. And they're and not it's really in the spirit of it's what this, metal is. Essentially, yeah, it's just, just shock. It's just know? shock or when, anger or whatever. Yeah, you and know, like feelings. That's <laughs> just really you know that that's just. I mean, now it's it's evolved where it can be like. I mean, now I mean you mentioned feelings. You know, there's it's it's gone to a it's gone to so much where you can just write anything like you know in death metal in general. It doesn't always has right. to be like brutal, but that was the whole shtick. It has yeah. to be brutal. I mean, it, you, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, that's uh, I mean, Slayer. Jesus Christ hasn't changed for how long, and and people I mean, still bitched about Slayer. I mean, Angel of Death was the most controversial album they released. I know, and they had some early trouble, but then now, I mean, they they were on like Jimmy Fallon show when they released, I believe, Repentless. Yeah, I think it was Repentless. But th- just just the hilarity of like. I mean, Jesus Christ, talk about, like, going after somebody who is just, like, yeah, nothing will just, ever happen to Cannibal. They'll, this, they'll this all, quit the thing before is, before anything happens to them. This originated in Twitter, too. So, I mean, Twitter's yeah. a cesspool, and it's like, uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, they're, gonna, they're just going to jump onto the next thing and try doing... Cancel you know, that. Yeah. They should have tried harder with Dr. Disrespect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well... I mean, there was people who gave a shit, but you know who pulled another Doctor Disrespect shenanigan? Um, mm, or, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh <laughs> man. Yeah. So we're yeah, you know we we decided to, to jump on the Mr. Beast uh, hype train. Not really, but okay. So yeah. what what's been going on? You know, there's there's been a lot of shit happening with Mr. Beast lately. You know, a lot of expose videos, but we kind of talked about it a little bit, a tiny amount in a previous episode. So we well we talked well this little. Now it's not what's happening now, but no. we talked about the per, um, Chris Tyson or Ava yeah. Chris Tyson um, when you know she was being dehumanized in a video, but because of her because of current, her uh, current transition, yeah. you know, and they were saying how she was going to be a nightmare, but you know, well, uh, um, it turned out <laughs> well, <laughs> it did again, happen. Set, but here's it, here's why. Hear me set out. What's stage. happened recently? <laughs> Well, not too recently, like about like ju- sometime throughout the month of July after we recorded the episode. Like, yeah. this was like when I came back home from tour, like going into August. Mm-hmm. There was a video talking about Ava Chris Tyson's past history and her past tweets. It's it's all gone now, by the way. Yeah. But screenshots they were, were taken. Screenshots right? were taken. They were associating <laughs> with this YouTuber called Shadman, who is, and there was a bun- There was a list of YouTubers who were um, associated with them. But it, basically, the Epstein list, the, the the YouTube's uh, version of the Epstein list is, was yeah. revealed, <laughs> because Shadman is a is a degenerate who animated on um, uh, CP. In, in, uh, if, yeah, yeah, and there was also you know he used to sell that t- provocative art of minors. Um, mm. And there was a infamous Mr. Beast video that's also edited now, but um, where they were ordering pizza. This was you know. Um, when Chris Tyson, b- before Chris Tyson tra- um, uh, transitioned, mm-hmm. the on there was a frame where you see a, a that picture on a wall on a Mister on an old Mister Beast video. So this oh. dude actually purchased it from him. He interacted with them, but he, that's not what they were exposed for. Like that's not the only thing. They were exposed for grooming a minor. That that's what was going on. Um, yeah. The minor they I, they I think their their name was Lava, and there was videos and screen no there were screenshots of them talking and one of the most like one of the interactions was like um i posted some fire nudes um today uh please don't share with nobody and i'm like mm. that's pretty uh there you go it's pretty <laughs> disgusting they were just talking inappropriately with minors and yeah a lot of people were saying that mr beast knew or did he not knew i, I don't know part of me thinks that we could have known allegedly because um so you, you know, we I don't really because um, I mean he he says you know he's he was shocked to learn about this, but I'm like, well, this guy's it been could, your. Clo- it could be like one of many things, honestly. It could be that he didn't know because honestly, you know, is so, there anybody more busy in this world than someone like Mr. Beast? Well, you know? I'm about to get to that because there's yeah. more stuff that's been brought out. Because after that, there was another. I'm gonna put this guy's name on there. I forgot to look him up, but this 
everyone pretty much i mean well, everyone on the youtube sphere that watches you know the whole thing knows who this person is but they were getting cease and desist um uh letters by mr beast's team because of the video so they are currently on part two video of the expose okay of mr beast the work the toxic work environment you know and how mr beast is not much of a great person and on the second video there was a former employee you know talking about like the horrendous like things he's gone through while being on set i think it was one of the videos where he was in an asylum for you know how he has those challenges like i was in an asylum for 90 days and all that so he was in one of them he talked about the terrible working conditions and there was another kicker he had mr beast actually had um uh it was revealed that he had someone who was a convicted uh who, who was on the sex offender registry oh and this person um uh, what's it called? Uh, had an well, they unfortunately did something to someone that was like between the ages of one and eleven. Oh, it's gross and yeah. He, oh my god! It, there's a dude in a mask in one of the videos as well, and they called him Delaware. His name isn't Delaware. Where well, people were saying it was Delaware because he couldn't come back to Delaware, or some shit. Yeah. But um, it turns out he also is a former. Um, what's it called? Uh, he's a brother-in-law of a former Mr. Beast employee. Um, I, I'm going to put his name up there because he, he was also on there. And it's funny because at first he was with Mr. Beast and mm -hmm. he started talking shit about him. And then people were also looking back at him and were like, hey, isn't this your brother-in-law? And he tried also making him seem like, um, yeah, you know, uh, he his um, whatever he did was terrible. But he's a good father. You know, he he's a changed man. And I'm like, oh, this dude still did the fucking crime. So there is a lot of stuff being exposed about him. I mean, I, I think as of... Uh, as this video drops, part three might be coming out. But the reason I say allegedly on a lot of these things is because, yeah, I mean, this YouTuber Obviously. is receiving uh, cease and desist letters. Yeah, they're being there. He's receiving threats of, you know, getting sued. But he is not stopping. He's yeah. actually going at it because the first video dropped and, you know, they were they were talking about a few hits details. And then the second one is revealing even more shit. And I'm like, so it's. It's interesting to, to see what what might happen next, you know. Yeah, so uh, chances are Mr. Beast might be the Antichrist people have <laughs> believed him to be, which is, uh. it's insane. Like, you know, the, yeah. the whole Chris Tyson situation opened up the floodgates for this whole thing. Well, I think the last time something happened to Mr. Beast, wasn't it, before all this, obviously, wasn't it the whole he was trying to cure blindness or yeah, something? Yeah, and well, I mean, yeah, but that was like, what was what was the subtext? What was of the that? subtext people of that? Were people messing. were just messing with him, but now it's like, okay, now the the you know now all eyes are on him, you yeah. know, based on all of this stuff because it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, and he it goes has back to be to one of the richest YouTubers that exist. But the thing is, can he come back from this? I don't think so. Yeah, it's look like it's looking very grim because, but you know, before some people were like, when when a few of the stuff that was coming out about him at the time, people were like, well, I mean, he, he could still possibly come back from this, but more and more stuff has been dropping, and now everyone's yeah. like, oh my god, it's it's one of those things like he has to eliminate <laughs> the problem from his camp first and, of all, and see the, and see that's just the thing, like you know, and it goes back to the question, I'm like, did ha, you know, did Mr. Beast? really not know what chris tyson was doing because i mean if he had because according to that person jimmy or well, that's the name of, yeah you know that's his actual name and i think his mother were told by this person what he has done and he was still hired yeah which is like uh th this is a yeah very it's interesting <laughs> very uh interesting and i'm like Maybe he did know allegedly. I don't know, but I mean, maybe it's he did. maybe he didn't. Maybe he tries. To regardless, give all of its yeah, chances. Or, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I don't regardless, know. it's all disgusting. I mean, it's it's crazy because I was over here like going like, hey, you know, I, like there's no need, you know, to for the unnecessary hate of Chris Tyson last year. But then, and sure, you know, like no no one should ever hate a trans person for simply existing. But yeah. for this person's actions. It's irredeemable uh, irredeemable yeah. like no they they were fired as well so you know rightfully so but yeah it's there's still some there's stuff still here, a whole some lot i mean <laughs> i will see i mean if we'll, if we'll see if there's an update i mean we'll probably talk about it quick but you know yeah. I, I just wanted to give a short tldr because there's just a fuck ton of details i can only remember so much shit <laughs> another thing about this too is this is all youtube and the court of opinion no one is going to 
court currently. No one's being tried by no, a but jury the thing or is, by though, police. It does, um, you know, it does really affect like content creators as a whole. I mean, Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers, com- you know, actually did comment that on this because obviously Mr. Beast is like one of the face of like you know, he is. Every, yeah, like he of is YouTube. The face. YouTube and loves seeing him. all of this stuff unfolding, you know, yeah. companies could be looking at you know other YouTubers and be like. Well, if this guy has, you know, skeletons in the closet, who's we, to yeah, say well, that the other ones that on we're, we're taking guy. a bet on this other yeah. guy or this or, you know, everyone else on the platform. Yeah. And it because a lot of this shit can fuck up stuff for people. I mean, it, I mean, it could affect us one day. You know, it could make it hard for <laughs> YouTubers getting sponsors from, you know, right. companies because yeah. of it's like, oh, well, the, the biggest dude on top, you know, had a bunch of controversy. We don't they don't want to risk, you know, I get that. But at the same time, it's like. I don't know. Maybe you could just link it to, like, massive amounts of success that eventually someone's going to screw up some way, you know? I don't know. But it does seem to be that a lot of, like, streamers and YouTube, it's one thing specifically that always rears its head. Yeah, I mean, even, even like, big content creators are going like, yeah, I don't want to work with him anymore. Like, I'm just like, oh, this is very telling. You know, we'll see. I mean, uh, my thoughts on it is... If, if like, again, with Dr. Disrespect, if he can just come back and, like, nothing happened, and he's the one who actually tried to do something with an underage girl, Mr. Beast uh, is removed to a certain degree. Can we at least say that, you know? So... If he did try to brush it all off, I mean, I what mean, does he lose? Like, maybe 20% of his subscribers? You we know? don't know, because... I guess that as of recording, more stuff is coming out still. So, like, this is what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't we'll know. See. <laughs> it's I've been watching a lot of stuff lately, and it's it's ugly. It's yeah, ugly. It's like the whole Delaware thing. I just found out days ago, and I'm like, this is really fucked up. I'm like, yeah. oh man. I'm pretty glad that none of my favorite YouTubers have gone down. <laughs> I mean, he was never my favorite YouTuber, yeah. but he. I mean, obviously you. You obviously knew who he was, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, it's just I'm just saying. It's just like, like it's just a million like a scandals. Minecraft well, I mean, there was go down or Smash. Oh, yeah, guy I, I can or... I can never go in the Minecraft community. <laughs> Same thing with the Smash community. But yeah. I mean, there was the Illuminati situation. Yeah, I used whole, to watch that oh, channel. Yeah. But yeah, I still look at it every now and again just to see if people are still saying things in the comments. It's all disabled now. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a dead channel. But yeah, um, that's, that's pretty funny. much it for SBNN. We're gonna be moving Let's on to uh, yeah, you know, lighten bit. up the mood a little bit <laughs> with uh, some uh, uh, wonderful guest. Uh, my new guest, who this? Who new could guess? it be? Who this? They were just like duds. Imagine for an hour <laughs> or forty-five minutes or how long the interview was just like. We should do a cutaway of us, like. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Another episode of <laughs> another episode of Shreddy Boys. Why did you leave that? <laughs> <laughs> New episode of Shreddy Boys. We got your favorite segment in the whole goddamn world. It is new guest who dis and Brian. Who do we have? On the stupid goddamn show of ours. You always call it stupid, but anyways. <laughs> um, well, it, it, it isn't Influent 5, despite Alicia being there. It, it, is it Fantasma Negra? <laughs> no, wait. Is it the way that David said it? Fantasma Negra. Fantasma Negra. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is us. <laughs> it is me. Awesome. It is I. Well, uh, mm-hmm. how, how have you guys been? What you been up to? Uh, I heard you all um, uh, drop the new album. It's been yeah. good. Uh, we, we we dropped the album this past Friday. Uh, 13 songs. Took us six months. Uh, worked with Dan Klein. Um, you know, and we we have... Uh, we worked really hard on it. I mean, Gus and Elisa could t- and talk more about it, too. Yeah, man. We put in time on that. Um, so we've been just kind of a little stuck in the studio for a bit, but we're getting back to rehearsals for our upcoming show, uh, August 10th at Cobra Lounge. It's our album release show that day. It's going to be good. We took like Very almost sweet. six months to, yeah, we took almost six months to like record this entire album. And it was impressive because one of the songs that was on there, like just kind of came up like in the between time that we were recording. So we initially had another song that was supposed to be on there, but 
um dave and and gauze like came by with uh the new song called nameless hopeless and then it's just like i remember one night it was storming and it was just like a really like atmosphere type of thing i was just messing around with some melody and lyrics and then boom a week later we were done with the song so 13 songs and then the album release show like gus said august 10th so it's good times i'm excited so question if if it, if that 13th song would have never came out would you just name the album 12 or it would still it still would have been 13 <laughs> no we had we had another we had another song in its place ready to go but we just swapped it out for this one um it just felt more in line with the sound of this album it didn't sound like disturbed <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm wondering if they're afraid of Black Sabbath's re- uh, retaliation because <laughs> they have an album called Thirteen. No. Oh, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Wait, Henry, didn't you find that out? Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> no, I, we're, I we're in good company. company. Yeah, we did search up that how many albums. There's actually a <laughs> lot of uh, artists that released their albums Thirteen insane so i mean that's gonna be really good yeah. be really on the <laughs> a child's play walking that's that's <laughs> that's right off the top of my head megadeth <laughs> black sabbath mushroom head oh and nova mushroom head <laughs> mushroom head <laughs> i'm like oh okay that's pretty cool so i have had Unfortunately, I've I've only had one chance to go through the entire album, and I gotta say, you know, I I've been monitoring, <laughs> you know, you guys, I, you know, every time I hang out with like Fabian or something, or like uh, recently I've been seeing Dan a lot more, and just hearing these tracks and just you know hearing the process that you guys have been uh, taking is is just like it's crazy, you know, and then. Uh, you guys have been doing also like the drop system that's kind of like uh, common in, in I'd say modern days where you like like sprinkle a single here, sprinkle a single there. Was that cognizant or were you just were you guys just like as they go kind of drop on? We don't really know when the album is going to come out or I mean, was there a battle plan there? We had to release the first single before uh, dropping the album. Uh, but picking the first one was the hardest, but I think it was more of like, it was during the time of, uh, I think it was February that we're working on that first single, which was on ice. And uh, we wanted to had the initial idea of also shooting a music video, which we did drop it alongside the uh, debuting our first single uh, from this album. So I, I really uh, think like on ice was the first step, but uh, alongside of that, we had like a concept going on that we wanted to, uh, display um, and then uh, everyone just contributed really um, like a lot in the music video like uh, we shot it at the rock spot and um, that inspired us to make maybe like another music video for each single that we're going to drop but it was so time consuming that we, we postponed uh, those projects for um, post album release show alright yeah I, I when you guys dropped uh, On Ice um, yeah awesome video by the way guys but Thanks. i remember that was one of the songs that uh i really latched on to early um you know what because i i mean obviously this is no mystery i've i've recorded you guys i think like twice at this point and i've seen you guys maybe like three times at, at, at this point maybe but it's uh it's pretty crazy to have seen you guys like grow this quickly. Like I remember the first time I saw you, it was I think it was before Fabian and Dave joined the band. And you too, I believe, Gus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I joined at the same time uh, as them. We were... Yeah. So I was I was like, you know, I remember seeing that lineup and being like, Oh, these guys are like really fun, you know? But it, there there definitely was like okay it's a little looser you know like uh, in my mind i was like i think you guys still have like a, a little ways to go and then uh fabian and dave joined and it's just interesting to see like because fabian doesn't play keyboards or at least i never knew him to play keyboards and then 
Dave is a, a metal guitar player. Like it, it's so weird that it worked out so well, you know. And then like the just you know what it is now, I can say confidently is the most polished version uh, from that first time I saw you guys. So it's uh it's very interesting, you know. Um, listening to that album is 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 it really showcases all of your talents. I will say. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, for for my sake, I will say I haven't gotten around to listening to it just yet. I have a backlog of other stuff that I've that's gotten in the way, but I will get to it. I, I will, I'll make sure to prioritize. Uh, it's really good. To it. No, I, I bet it is. I'm pretty sure. I mean, if my if Mike's speaking so highly of it, I'm definitely giving it a chance. Oh I mean, yeah. Not that I'm like closed minded on listening to anything outside of metal, you know. But yeah, I, I listen to like way too much music. <laughs> like I guess an unhealthy amount while I'm at work. So. I have like I I really I have a I mean I have like a ma- a massive backlog of stuff that I got to catch up on and yeah, it's just been brutal but no yeah I'll definitely check it out when I have the chance. One question I did have um with the three singles you released I noticed you guys have different artwork for each one of them and it seemed to be like a theme with hands specifically and uh then when you dropped the album I I was fully expecting hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, there's there's no hands on this one. And I was like, what what was the inspiration for that versus uh what what ended up being the album artwork? Um I think like for the first one on ice, uh I guess the concept we wanted to do something on with ice originally. So we wanted to get like a like a heart and then kind of like have like a sheet of ice. Uh, or at the time it was February, we couldn't, but everything was already melting. So thanks to global warming, uh, that got us to do like the, the art that we have now. Um, and then there was another concept that Alicia wanted to do to see maybe, uh, at the time we had a, uh, food collaboration with, um, Bizarro and Sons and we asked if they had a walk-in freezer. And then there was like a concept where like her face would be like that tilted up mm-hmm. and then, like, like smoke of like coldness and stuff but it'll be a close-up of her lips and stuff kind of like that um but that it, it didn't uh, it didn't work out either so we had like two weeks to like at least come up with cover artwork so what i did was i grabbed um like what got me you know, like you know what this is our first single maybe just number one like we're like number one single coming out uh as an indication that's our first single but kind of going on right. theme of what the music video is going to be about uh and the sheets of ice i mean alicia could tell you all about it too as well like her experience mm-hmm. with her hand and and <laughs> it was just so uncomfortable bro because it was just like fake blood like fabian put on like a ton of like <laughs> fake scabs all over my hand yeah and it was just like having like a good chunk of my forearm like from this all the way down here yeah. on top of like a sheet of ice and it was like a really uncomfortable pose <laughs> It was just cold yeah. and everything, and, and Henry's just like, hold still, hold still for like a good <laughs> ten minutes, and it's just like taking pictures after pictures. So I, um, I put on like los cadet, los ninares del norte, or like los cadetes, and just like a lot of older stuff, just to like you know chill out on the time in the background. We were just listening to like a bunch of like norteña, <laughs> this was going on. So it's, uh, right. <laughs> it's kind of like getting a tattoo. You kind of have to just zone out and not paying it, pay attention to <laughs> to what's going on. <laughs> yeah. It was gross, but and, you know, we, we did it. We got it through. Okay. So that was that single. And then the other two are also uh, hand hand themed. <laughs> so was that just cognizant? Like, hey, we did this. Let's just keep going with the same theme. More yeah. or less, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was just following it up. So like, and through those, it was like between two. And I'm like, why don't you put two hands? So um, I put my hand in my girlfriend's hand. And the way it was set up was like two, like, weird lights but on the same side and I had to take a picture with like a uh, my canon camera that's like that's like 15 pounds at least <laughs> um <laughs> and so i had to take it like in an awkward pose and with my <laughs> with my wrist all like all, all like yeah all and, shit. and then we took that photo and then um uh shout out to my girlfriend she edited all the uh the the photos um from one nice. one to two basically yeah and then the, the third one is, too huh she did the album artwork too. Oh yeah, the album artwork too. Yeah, she did the uh, album work uh, for that. Does she, and under basically she, uh, like, 
a week or two. I was right? gonna say, does she have any yeah. like a handle or anything or a, a greater page if you want to plug that? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, at bury me in flowers, uh, in- Instagram. Um, very cool, yeah. But for the third one, when I said it was awesome because it was like the I was like, oh, how are we gonna do three hands? Is it gonna be like this? And like, we don't want to throw game signs or. You know, like, <laughs> you know, or, or, or like, uh, we didn't want to enter those with like two SMPs because it's just, I don't know. So, was like, two hands, but Rena said it's like, well, for Elisa, she can tell you it's a love song um, and, and what it all means and stuff. So, I figured, like, well, what's romantic when you hold someone's hand? It's just one hand and two hands are holding it, you know? And then that day, Elisa could tell how, 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 hot it was that day to take uh the, Bruh, the flies were eating me and santi my husband it was just like we were posing in the <laughs> underneath like a ladder and he and henry was again posing us for like 10 minutes just, just like hold still or like move your hands this way or move your hands that way and santi doesn't really pose his hands it was his first experience as a hand model same for me um <laughs> and it was it, yeah it was just hot as hell it was like the sun was beating down. It was midday, but it came out really nice, um, you know. And then the fourth one was just all of us at uh, UFC, so it was pretty cool. We took uh, some pictures there with um, a photographer named Zelitsin Vasquez. They're a really awesome mm-hmm. photographer. Uh, and we I've just heard of that like, name before. They're really, really good. I really appreciate their work. Um, we all went to UFC, and we just took some pictures at like some of the front gates i'm not too familiar with the ufc campus but we're like it's goth it's on the south side you know it's, it's gonna be good so that was the our theme. yeah the theme and mm-hmm. um, that was our fourth album right there i mean not fourth album fourth ep no wait no we're artwork. single yeah the <laughs> fourth the, single yes for out of time so yeah all right very cool um and then what was the inspiration for the final artwork then uh for the album or the, the some, yeah album? yeah sorry for the oh. album <laughs> oh the album okay um yeah because i'm i'm looking at it it's very uh it's very like abstract almost yeah it is yeah. i like it. it it was uh mainly everyone's um I, it was actually uh um isis who's my girlfriend who designed the album uh mm-hmm. isis had worked on um something like i think from 2019 i think our 2020 um album work that she did and it had like a very droopy kind of like um uh i forgot there was a specific word for it but it's like um very like streetwear kind of like graphic design kind of stuff mm-hmm. and then um i told these guys oh, we're also on the crunch roll too uh we're like freaking out we're like okay who's gonna like do the artwork <laughs> uh how much money is it gonna be it's gonna cost a lot and then the turnaround uh cost the turnaround so i asked her i'm like well she's willing to do it for free you know she's been supporting us for she made our the original logo as well so uh we're like okay let's let's try this and then um i asked everyone uh to send me their inspiration gus and alicia and uh dave and fabian they they all put in their input of what they like you know and then uh she did her what she she does best and then um uh she did four versions All right, we're back from New Guess Who This, and we had the lovely, the lovely group, Fantasma Negra, <laughs> Spooky Ghost. Like how you say it. <laughs> the Spooky bo- Spooky Ghost Band. No, no. <laughs> but yeah. seriously, um, we had them on. It was fantastic. <laughs> we, uh, I'm a huge fan. You know, so uh, am I. And if you wanna, you know, catch a glimpse of their set and how they sound live, uh, you can go on to our Shreddy Boys Instagram. I'm gonna start plugging this in more because, um, yeah, we I, we're, I mean, we're gonna try, you know, going to as many local shows. Well, I play shows, but I'm gonna try recording bands, you know, on that page and just be like, hey guys, look at this sick band. We got we got some ideas coming down the pipe. Um, the crack pipe. <laughs> 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 Jesus! <laughs> oh my God, is that a new segment? <laughs> no, could but, be something. Uh, but yeah, um, go, go. Fuck, Brian. Go listen to their album. It's fantastic. It's on all of the streaming platforms. And yeah, go support them if you happen 
to be able to. And uh, guys, uh, I cannot stress enough. These guys are awesome. They're going to go places. They've come a long way. Yeah, they're They're going to go go places. places. I believe it. I can see it. Definitely. Go support them any way you can. Go listen to music. Go follow them on all the social media. But yeah. Hell yeah. Now, so. uh, I, mean, I think we should have a wrap it up with a final final segment. Uh, yeah, band let's tips. do a little band tip for, for all the shreddy boys and girls. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> you got any idea what that is? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> it's called valuing people's fucking time. And let me go into... <laughs> in depth because earlier i said you know when first i went on tour catch up yeah. catch up you know uh milwaukee was a shit show and for many many fucking reasons <laughs> i mean several of our buddies know about it you know because we talked about it when it unfolded um mm-hmm. but you know it's time it's time for it to be documented on the shreddy voice <laughs> yeah. channel you know it's gonna and be shreddy here boys history shreddy voice history but so you know, we were, this was day three of our, you know, tour run. It was going to be us, Right to Torment, Sun Crusher, Come Correct, and Jirogumo um, at a Bremen Cafe in Milwaukee. So, you know, we get there hours early. We went to our brewery, had some food, and I was like, hey, Mike, did you go to this one place over here? I took yeah, a picture, yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> fast forward to us getting to the venue. We were there because the show was supposed to start at 9, but we got there hours, several hours early just to see, you know, what right. it's going to look like. Um, we got there at like 4 or 5 in the afternoon. We were the first ones there, by the way, and, uh, you know, it's always good to, you know, show up on time when you're out on the road. You want to show up on time for loading and, you know, get all your gear stuff, get everything situated. And this is going to come in. I want to get into it very shortly. So when we got there, we were just talking to, you know, the, the people at the bar and are like, oh, yeah. So, you know, here's the stuff and that's it. And I'm like, so where's the guy who set the whole thing up? Yeah. And that was the whole thing the person who you know because um the person who organized it wasn't there so we're like okay we were just you know waiting yeah. and waiting and then you know sun crusher ended up messing you know with the pa system they were you know setting up the mic and i'm like isn't there supposed to be someone doing this themselves where's the and that? Crew? Where's, where's the, the crew where's the sound guy you know where's the person who organized it they're yeah. supposed to be the one doing this you know they, they put they put the show together but right the guys no out one, here yeah and uh, the reason I mentioned Jiroguma last is because their drummer was the person who set the whole thing up. And, um, really? yeah, he was the one who put it together. And I also should add that aside from that, so that that show was supposed to start at 9. And there was mm-hmm. a show down the street um, with a bunch of, you know, like huge, like hardcore and death metal bands over there. Called It was like a Palestine benefit show. So we were like, why don't we just push it back a little bit? We even asked the bar and they said, yeah, it's totally fine. Just as long as you guys are done like at 1.30 because the place closed at 2. So in the meantime, you know, we were just going up to people, passing, you know, the little flyers for like the tour and tell them, hey, we're playing down the street. So if you want to come by, you know, after the show, come through. So we were just putting uh, stickers in everyone's hand, you know, right. telling them about it, get word of mouth. And we, like we were going doing hard at it. Doing more work. Than Th- doing the more work than the promoter. <laughs> and that, and, and, you know, that it, and going back to this later. Yeah. So it ended up like, uh, what's it called? Nine, nine o'clock came by, you know, come correct. Um, showed up uh, to load in. Um, well, they weren't even aware what time load in was. And we were just like, wait, where, where are those guys as well? But I'm guessing they weren't told when load in was supposed to be. Yeah. Or, or they, they just weren't really sure. So then uh, two members of Jiro Gumo showed up much later. They were the very last people to show up. And, mm-hmm. were, you know, I, I had taken the time to help these people, you know, with their stuff. Right. And. You know, it was getting close to, you know, the show being started. We had, there was a couple people from, you know, the venue down the street. Who came. Who came, checked the place out, and I had people tap my fingers like, hey, wh- when's the show starting? I'm like, oh, yeah, it should start soon enough. And I'm like, motherfucker, I hope it starts soon because <laughs> let me yeah. tell you one thing. We were all wondering where the fuck was their drummer. Yeah. Because they were going to be the ones starting, you know, kicking things off, but their their buddy wasn't there. And so we kept asking their bandmates, where is your drummer? Where is he? And they were avoiding that question. They were they just kept saying, are you guys going to move your amps? And it's like, where is your drummer? 
Yeah. We're trying to get this started. Otherwise, you guys are not going to play. You're not answering my question. Are you going to move your amp key? I'm like, where the fuck is your drummer? Yeah. I was this close to grabbing their <laughs> shit and throwing it out. And if I was going to, and like all of us were like ready to square up with one of those guys because yeah. we were getting extremely pissed off. We were there like from like four in the afternoon, well, much earlier because we ate and at the brewery. It's but it's like nine. Or now something. it's like, no, Eight. now it's like 11, like 10 50. Oh. 10 50 because the show was supposed to start like 11, 11 30, right? But it's 10 50. We're like, where yeah. the fuck is your drummer? And they were not cooperating. They were holding the stage hostage. Yeah. People were, you know, leaving because nothing was going on. Right. So we're like, fuck you guys. We're not playing. And they just they, they just sat on the stage like all quiet and embarrassed. And then shout out to uh, Dylan from Come Correct because he called them out on their bullshit. You know, he, he has set up shows for eight years and he's told them that. It's like, I've set up shows for eight years. If you're doing this shit, you got to be there, you know, before the bands are there. Otherwise, don't be doing this shit at all because it's, it, yeah. it's just... All you're doing is wasting people's time, especially, you know, our especially time. Especially a touring band. A touring band. band. We came all the way from Kalamazoo, yeah. Michigan to Milwaukee. That's like a, a fucking four to five hour drive. Not not to mention we made a stop to in Chicago to get something to eat, shower yeah. really quick. But still, all that gas and all those fucking miles that we drove yeah. for fucking nothing. I was pissed off. We were all pissed off. Some of our buddies... um. Well, we had a couple friends uh, that are that know First Step to Glory in Milwaukee. A uh, former uh, bandmate, he went over there with I think his brother. One of our friends came from Chicago, mm. or two of our friends actually came from Chicago to support us there, oh, only for us to not sad. play. I it, it was embarrassing. I'm like, I, and it's just like the, the the whole thing is, guys. You know, if you know, for those who are setting up a show, like y- you gotta it, professionalism. That's just, oh yeah, that, you gotta value people's time, especially be yeah. Professional, be professional as shit. You know, be there, on, be on time. Sure, you're you're gonna run into bands that may not be on time, but in general, like this goes for the bands and people are setting up everything. Yeah, be there on fucking time because, especially if you're having yeah. a touring band, you don't just want to like waste their time. And not to mention, there was their drummer pissed me off that day too because mm-hmm. he made a post on his story saying show is postponed to 11 30 because i'm seeing tortured i'm like fuck you <laughs> i was like fuck you man there you go yeah th- i mean they, they apologized and they were like hope you guys you guys can give us a second chance yeah well i'm gonna say it on shreddy you'll, boys no nah, no no nah, no nah. you'll never get a second you'll chance never get a second chance don't don't know and like this is not me trying to put you know like people down but look don't, don't work with these guys because if you know our time was fucking wasted and chances are your time may be wasted and to be so cavalier about it like just like i mean i don't know man if let's say the rest of the band members like knew about it oh you're gonna go see a show you're gonna waste our time i would have been pissed about that like that would be like grounds for firing the shit out of that drummer yeah and i mean that day (laughs) here's the thing like you know people can change and people can improve and i mean i hope you really you know learn from this and actually you know value people's fucking time probably not probably not (laughs) that's the thing dude that's just the thing like especially i'm again this is gonna sound bad but (laughs) in our genre specifically we i mean we've seen it time and time again brian there are tons of people in this genre specifically that are incredibly unprofessional, yeah. especially promoters. Promoters that have no idea what the hell is going on. You know, they think just because they can rent a venue means that, oh, I threw the poster on Facebook. That's all I got to do. It's like, no, you got to promote the show. You got to yeah. get people at you, you the You can't show. expect the bands to do all the work, you know. Yeah. Every, it, it's a group. It's a It's a fucking group effort. One hundred percent. And then you're telling me this guy <laughs> who booked the show, who wasn't even fucking there, everybody's literally. time, who's not promoting the show, who's doing nothing to get this lineup going, you know, set up the PA. It's it's beyond laughable. And it, it is it, detestable. The fact that one of the touring pack bands, or technically the touring bands, were the ones that were you know spearheading this whole yeah. thing themselves. And not them says a whole fucking lot. Like, dude, yeah. you're supposed to be doing all of this, not us. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, that was that yeah. was pretty much it. I could have, I was even telling the guys, man, we should just go home. But we decided to wait it out. But if I had I gone <laughs> home, I could have seen Volpadini and Fallujah. 
Yeah. But it, it's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll catch them next time. But still, that was just I mean, stupid. Like, the first two days were fucking amazing. They were, yeah. they were it was like, the. I mean, same thing with Chicago. That made great up show. for all of it. You know, great show. It was packed. Very fucking packed. At, the live wire. At the live wire. But the, it was just that that's, day that was you like. Know, that's one of those things I, I was talking about before you left was, you know, the the prospect of trying to book a tour with people you've never met with promoters you've never seen face you're running a risk basically. truly truly just trusting people that you have no idea if anybody else trusts them you are running such a high risk sure yeah i mean yeah you are running a high risk i mean that that shows it i mean yeah. you know i mean and it, it could happen again of course right but it probably will you probably know will. But that's part of all of this unfortunately is you know is yeah learning. i mean it it really it really shows you know like um it it gives you like the um uh it has it really has you thinking if this is something you really want to pursue or not i mean yeah despite the bullshit i'm still down to keep it going of course and yeah. you know what you had one bad experience and you know every every single band has stories like this you know central disorder before you and i were in the band um they went down to some gig in ohio i believe where um it's kind of the same thing. The promoter, me, uh, yeah, the promoter was doing nothing. He was actually there, but he was going to cancel the show. And all these other bands were like, "No, absolutely not. Why would you cancel it?" You know. So they had this show, and they didn't have a, a huge crowd. But Rob and the rest of the band had to spearhead because the promoter was just useless. And they, uh, you know, they did it. They were able to do the show that they traveled that you know all the way yeah, out there to do literally i mean and sometimes it sucks you know but it's part of it unfortunately you're gonna deal with people who suck and it all depends who's running it but yeah, yeah. i mean that's, that's your band tip guys be professional band tip in and every sense with a little story <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right well that's that's i'd say that's a pretty good way to close out the show brian Pretty so yeah, pretty, pretty good solid. Way. Pretty solid. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, I'm pretty sure at this point I've already picked a very click baity <laughs> title and picture for this. Hey, maybe we call it Mr. Beast Goes to the Olympics or something. <laughs> no, yeah, I, don't I don't know. know something. But um, thank you for supporting. Uh, make sure that you go check out Fantasma Negra and all this stuff. Make sure you check out, you know, we don't plug ourselves enough, Brian. Go follow all the crap we have a discord channel go follow our social follow medias our so, uh, uh don't add me on facebook no, I'm <laughs> don't add him on facebook towards the end of this month uh i'll you just know, go ahead fo and follow it. well i mean yeah like you know uh follow our social medias but mainly follow the shreddy boys instagram page i'm trying to get that, those numbers up you know that is where we post most of our tomfoolery you know yeah you know, our tomfoolery we promote episodes <laughs> and, and that's you know, moving you guys, forward uh, i also want to like uh you know live stream bands that 100 the local scene yeah, dude. And uh, we got some other stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, I will say this. Towards the end of this month or the beginning of next month, we will have a brand new series that uh, uh, episode one will drop. Uh, <laughs> teaser coming in. Teaser. For those of you who actually watched little, this far. <laughs> All righty, guys. You guys Make have sure a good you, night. Uh, yeah, have a good night. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps the channel a lot. <laughs> Mike, you fucking forgot. It. <laughs> like, I'll add the graphic. It's all, all the stuff all the, that's all happening All the stuff. Right now. But anyways, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, thanks for um, uh, sticking around for my TED Talk. And uh, this has been Shreddy Boys and signing out. <laughs> Goodbye, brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>